Sri Lanka, an island paradise in the Indian Ocean that can also be hell. He's a fiery fellow. And he got me then. 19 million people live here, but so do some of the world's most dangerous creatures. And the most feared amongst them is a snake. The Russell's Viper. Its venom is lethal. The only antidote, less than effective. That's why I'm here, to catch this wild and aggressive snake. Because the venom that kills is also the key to the cure. Point to Russell! Oh, he's having a big go. Watch out, Russell. In the grab. Care, care, care. Russell's Viper. It kills more people throughout its range in Asia than any other snake. But the Sri Lankan population is especially deadly. The unpredictable effect of its venom is like a deadly cocktail of Ebola, paralyzing nerve toxins and gangrene. Within minutes, victims can start bleeding from every orifice. Clinical shock can begin to shut down the body's circulation. Simultaneously, the poisons may start to destroy living tissue. A painful death often follows. Around 30,000 people on this island are bitten by Russell's vipers every year. Hundreds are killed. An exact figure is not known because many never make it to hospital. Bedlam. There are patients everywhere sharing beds. And the staff are doing everything they possibly can to not only save their lives, but also to make their recoveries more comfortable, less painful. The scale of Sri Lanka's problem has led to international efforts to develop a targeted, fully effective anti-venom. I've been called in by the world's leading snake bite expert to catch snakes for the program. But these snakes have evolved incredible camouflage. Most victims don't see them until it's too late. Finding them in the wild will be both difficult and dangerous. Like all vipers, this snake has a pair of really large, hinged fangs the front of his mouth. When he strikes, he opens his mouth to not far short of 180 degrees. The fangs come forward like a couple of sabers. They penetrate in the strike. The lower jaw closes on the prey or the victim, further forcing the fangs in, and a huge dose of venom is injected. It's all over in a flash. The consequences are extremely serious. I would use the term terrible to sum up Russell's Viper. It is really a terrible snake. In the region with the greatest number of snake bite deaths, medical teams struggle to cope with the sheer volume of victims. weapon in this war is an anti-venom produced in India to combat bites from Indian Russell's vipers. But the venom of these Sri Lankan snakes has differing toxic effects and the Indian drug does not deal with all of them. In dangerously large doses, the Indian version can keep people alive, but violent allergic reactions are common 
and the financial cost of these large doses is crippling. Last night, this bed was occupied by a Russell's Viper snake bite victim. He died four hours after admission from a cerebral hemorrhage. He bled into the brain. I'm teaming up with Oxford University's Professor David Worrell, a world authority on snake bite, and Dr. Arirani Ariratnam from the Colombo Faculty of Medicine. Along with colleagues in Sri Lanka and the UK, they're working towards the completion of a tailor-made anti-venom for the Sri Lankan Russell's Viper. A new research center is being built in the capital, Colombo, and needs wild Russell's Vipers for their venom. It's simple. If I'm successful in catching them, lives will be saved. Is that painful? Oh, yes, it's painful. Is that painful? Yes. And his main problem at the moment, he's reacting to the Indian antivenom and he's vomited several times, partly due to the antivenom reaction, but initially due to the venom. He's really very uncomfortable and very distressed. It's people walking home at dusk from the paddy fields or working in the paddy fields treading on or picking up concealed snakes and it's particularly during the agricultural seasons because that's when people are out in large numbers venom should be obtained from Sri Lankan snakes mm. and used to raise a special Sri Lankan anti-venom yeah. and crucially it's going to involve people like you Mark who know about snakes because we need that venom Anselm de Silva is Sri Lanka's leading reptile expert. He has spent over 40 years studying Russell's vipers. Together, we'll locate prime viper hotspots. These are very good uh, Russell's viper areas. A lot of people die it's, uh, because, as you can see, they are staying very far away from the hospital. Some of those are new settlements. 30 years ago, a massive irrigation program was initiated in this region. More than 100,000 families were relocated to turn scrub jungle into rich farmland, mainly rice or paddy farming. Then large numbers of barefoot workers began dying of snake bites. The world's highest number of snake bites was recorded in this region only a few years after the farming began. Those lucky enough to live to 70 have survived a 1 in 80 chance of being killed by a snake. the rice harvesting season in Sri Lanka, a time when family members, regardless of their normal jobs, gather together to collect this vital crop. But Russell's vipers are all around. It's an unpredictable, aggressive snake, and the harvest celebrations are often shattered. These numerous rat burrows are a clue to why there are so many snakes, especially Russell vipers, in these paddy fields. The rats come to feed on the unlimited supply of rice grain, and they get fat and they breed in large numbers. The snakes come to feed on the rats, and therefore they are doing the agricultural worker a service. Russell's vipers hunt rats at night and sleep in these fields during the day. The villagers who harvest the paddy work barefoot, and when they inadvertently step on the snakes, the consequences are mutually disastrous. The victim is pumped with lethal venom, but then, in turn, the Russell's viper is killed by the workers.
The Russell's Viper is not only a highly venomous snake, it's also extremely adaptable and very widely distributed. It's found not only in the paddy fields behind me, but it's also found in the forest, in the woodlands, and in the grasslands to altitudes of 5,000 feet, which is 10 times the height that I am now. My first visit to a paddy field didn't turn up any Russell's vipers, but one of Anselm's neighbors has captured a healthy specimen. So I'm about to collect the first involuntary donor to the Venom Research Program. This is an adult Russell's Viper. At this size, quite obviously breeding size, it could produce anywhere from five to 50 offspring. It's not an egg layer, it gives birth to live young. If you have a pregnant female in the area, suddenly you could have a more slimline female and lots of babies. And even the babies can be highly venomous. I'm hypersensitive to some antivenoms. If I'm bitten, the large dose needed could kill me. I can't take any chances. I've had specially designed boxes made up for safe transportation. And in the controlled environment of a laboratory, I'll show you why. The Russell's Viper. Its irascible temperament and rapid strike make it a real handful. And now by gently squeezing the glands on the side of his head, just behind his eyes, you saw how fast that strike was. That's how fast it would be if you were standing next to him. You can see the venom on the latex and also some in the bottom of the receptacle. Well, we're going to conduct an experiment to see what Russell's Viper venom does to human blood. No, I'm not that stupid. She's going to take blood, and we're going to test the effect in the test tube. Just press it. Thank you, Mark. You can okay. bend your elbow. OK. What we're going to do is make up two test tubes, one with just blood in, and the other one will have venom from a Russell's Viper that I milked just a little while ago introduced and we'll see what the effect is. In less than one minute, the effects are obvious. This is the one which is just blood, and this is the one which has the venom in, and if I turn them, the blood is still liquid, whereas the right hand where the venom has gone into the blood is one large blood clot. Now, this is what would happen when the snake strikes its rodent prey. Within a very, very short time, all of the blood in the rodent will clot and it will die. The snake will track it down and eat it. But what would happen if this amount of venom was injected into a human is somewhat different. Initially, it would cause clotting but the body would break down the clots and continue to do so until there was no clotting agent left in the blood. What would happen then is you would have blood that couldn't clot. You would bleed from the site of the bite. You would bleed from old scars. You would bleed possibly from the gums. And because the venom also contains a component that causes hemorrhaging, puts holes in the blood vessels, you would bleed from the blood vessels if this happens, you could bleed to death. Word reaches us from the hospital about another victim, but this time not a paddy worker. Nine-year-old Suresh was bitten early evening while playing in the garden. He falls into the other main group of Russell's Viper victims, villagers bitten after dark on badly lit roads and paths. Most people walk barefoot and do not carry flashlights. 
but Suresh did have a flashlight and identified the snake as a Russell's viper before he lapsed into semi-consciousness. It was a large snake and a serious bite. The medical team must work fast. But because Suresh was smart enough to recognize the snake as a Russell's viper, at least the doctors can prepare the most appropriate treatment available. They decide to give him a large dose of Indian antivenom. This in itself could kill Suresh if he suffers a serious allergic reaction. But his father has no option. Without treatment, his son will die. Most of my searching for Russell's vipers will take place after dark, when the snake is most active. My favorite method for catching nocturnal snakes is black topping or road cruising. Big green vine snake. Snakes are certainly coming up onto the road, but um, they're meeting their maker before we get to them. Dear me. Go slow, what's this? Snake. It's another snake. It's another dead snake. Yes. Oh, God. God, oh, dear. Why were we second on the scene? Look, adult Russell's viper. <sighs> but it does tell us that they are out and about. Moving off the road, that's what the dog's hanging around for. The first time I've ever laid hands on a Bengal monitor. Ah, he's been hit as well. I've never actually got this close to a Bengal monitor before. They don't let you do it. I'll have a look at him, mm. patch him up. Okay. It's been a frustrating night. Then I spot what I think is a Russell's Viper that's still alive. This has just been freshly killed when we drove down and thrown on here. All snakes we found this evening have been run over by cars. This one hasn't. This one has been beaten to death. But this is the species we're after. This is the culprit. This is the snake everyone hates. This is the snake that's responsible for all the deaths. So I can hardly blame people for beating it up and chucking it on the side of the road. Back in the hospital, Suresh is getting worse. The team prepare to give him even more antivenom. Like many families in Sri Lanka, Suresh's mother is thousands of miles away, working in another country to support her family. All his father can do is wait. Then, another setback. Suresh begins to have a violent reaction to the antivenom. I didn't turn up a single live Russell's Viper last night, but I did have one successful encounter. The one lucky creature I found on the road was this fellow. He'd been hit, I think, by a vehicle and had got blood all over him. I've nursed him overnight, and as you can see, he's hot to trot. They go away like trains. Searching for this snake is proving difficult. Russell's vipers are not manhunters. Their perfect camouflage and reclusive behavior actually limits contact with people. I'm going to need help. The local radio station has invited me to talk about my quest. I'll use this as an opportunity to recruit local assistance. Uh, we are welcoming you in the studio. Uh, the meaning of Saint Ivan from our language is may you long live. Because why 
you are saving the life of snake bite victims all over the world. I want Mr. Washin. Thank you very much, Aburn. Mark, how can local people help you? What I want them to do is to phone the telephone number that you'll give out on the show and watch the snake. I want to use my spider's web technique, where I am like a big fat spider sitting in the middle of the web, waiting for somebody to pull on the silk. That means there's a Russell's viper. What does it look like and what are its habits? Hey, Suresh has reached a critical stage. Russell's viper venom stays in the bloodstream for many days, and its deadly effects can reactivate if anti venom levels are not monitored and kept topped up. Suresh knew what snake had bitten him, which meant the medics could treat him straight away. Victims are encouraged to take the snake in with them for positive identification. Any delay in treatment can cause further complications, and although Suresh and his family acted quickly, the venom that's still in his bloodstream could be killing him, causing internal bleeding or damaging his kidneys beyond repair. My mission to capture Sri Lanka's most feared snake is spreading. More locals have been recruited to help with my Russell's Viper search. In a forest bordering disused paddy fields, one group has uncovered what they say is a venomous snake. snake. Okay, the upshot of this is I've seen a snake go into this pile. They haven't seen it come out, and they've waited till I arrived, which is very good discipline. I'm impressed by that. You see it? Did you see it? Yes. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yes. It's a little hump nose viper. So it is a venomous little critter. And what's more... <laughs> God, nature working against me. What's more, it's a pregnant little hump nose viper. A fully adult female. When she strikes, she'll open her mouth almost to well, probably about 160 degrees, and the fangs will be forward facing, they'll penetrate and inject a venom which um, causes necrosis, destruction of tissue, localized swelling, and um, there have been deaths in Sri Lanka to bites from uh, this snake, and the deaths are generally through kidney failure. The hump nose viper isn't the only snake on the fringe of the paddy fields. In no time, I bag a hatful. What a beauty. Nice size. You forget I'm not good off that. We've been given special permission to search Sri Lanka's famous ancient cities where man and snake have lived together uneasily for thousands of years. This is Pol Narua. In the 11th century AD, the Sinhalese drove out the then ruling Indian dynasty that had made the city its capital. The new Sri Lankan rulers built magnificent palatial buildings and religious temples. Today, the ruins provide only a suggestion of the splendor that once existed here. This stone trough, known as a medicine boat, in the heart of the ruins is another sign that venomous snake bites have been painfully endured here for thousands of years. Ancient scriptures studied by Anselm say serious snake bite victims were immersed here in liquid containing 58 different varieties of herbs in an attempt to cure them. 
A modern version is occasionally used today. There's no scientific proof that the treatment heals serious snake bite victims. But no scientists have conducted practical experiments until now. How do you feel, Mark, now? Well, it feels a lot better than I thought it would. It's, it's not unpleasant, and it's, it's quite warm. The rock's warm from the sun. Do you think this had any um, actual therapeutic value for coma, snake bite coma victims? There's a possibility of therapeutic effects of herbs. It is quite pleasant lying here. If you're in a coma, you don't know that you're enjoying it. If I had a serious snake bite, I think I'd put my, uh, my hands, my life in the hands of the medical doctors rather than the practitioners of the medicine bath. So now I'm going to do what most of the people that find themselves in this situation can't do. I'm going to get up and get out. And where there are bites from the Russell Spiper, there is fear. The snake has demonic status in this country and is at the heart of voodoo-like rituals. Wealthy businessmen from the big cities regularly employ the services of rural sorcerers to curse competitors. The only snake judged evil enough for these ceremonies are Russell's vipers. The sorcerer's spell reaches a climax when the viper's fangs are placed in a carved snake effigy. Apparently, this sorcerer offers a reversal service for targeted curse victims. Nice touch. The night search continues in working paddy fields where we need a different kind of local expertise. We've got quite a team out on the search tonight. We've got the local expertise of some wildlife guides and we've got a couple of wildlife officers armed with a rifle and with flares. And the reason for that is right here. These are the prints of wild elephants and wild elephants aren't the friendly ones that you see tourists riding. These will kill you. They're silent, they're large, and they're very deadly. You don't mess with wild elephants. This is a threshing floor, where they thresh the rice. And this is what attracts rats to feed on what's left, and hopefully also Russell's vipers to feed on rats. There's a tree house up there where people stay when they want to guard their crops against elephant attack. And that's where you go if uh, Jumbo appears. Although I don't think there's room for all of us up there. There certainly isn't room for us all going up the ladder at the same time. Back you check that place. Yeah, near the... Three. Our worst nightmare. Anselm, Anselm. As we move towards the centre of the paddy field, we hear movement in the jungle fringe. A rogue elephant has come to feed on the surplus rice. And it, oh, phenomenally dangerous. A guy was killed in this area um, only a week or so ago. Crushed flat. Wild elephants kill up to 60 people in Sri Lanka each year. They're still coming. We're trapped. If we move suddenly, the elephant may charge. The guides try to scare it by setting off flares and shooting into the air, but it doesn't work. You see, snakes are my bag, and people defer to me when there's a snake. Everyone backs off and lets me go over the snake. With something like wild elephants, that's not my area. I back off, and I let the experts move in. I'm just waiting to see if they think it's safe to continue or whether we've actually got to back out altogether. The elephant wouldn't budge, so we beat a strategic retreat. One of the guys that's been helping us today, one of the local chaps, has uh, just come over to say that they've cornered a Tikpalonga, which is Sinhalese known for Russell's Viper, so I'm really hoping that his idea is spot on. Because that's what we want, Russell's Viper. Oh, 
And then... Hey. Oh, it is! Great! It is a Russell Viper. Oh, beauty. Okay. What are you doing? No, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well... I'm not sure whether they've hit this, you know. I've had that situation before, uh -huh. where helpful people slow snakes down by whacking them with a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you end up with a snake mm. that dies, and there's something here that I'm not happy mm. about. Mm. He has got a shot to the head. Look at his head. Yeah. His head is, is leaning Lean to one side. Leaning towards one side, yeah. Yeah. I think there's every chance that he will be dead in the morning. Mm. Oh. Sadly, I was right. The Russell's Viper died in the night. At the hospital, the beds are spilling over with snake bite victims. Suresh is still suffering from both the Russell's Viper venom and his allergic reaction to the less than effective anti-venom. Back to basics. I target a village where I know that Russell's Vipers are active. This is where the local people injured the now dead Russell Viper. It's just before dusk. The Viper should be getting active and hungry. But it's also a time when children are still playing out. What? What? Right, seal this off. Grab stick. I don't know yet. Let's get everyone over here before we attack this. Right, OK. What we want everyone to do, Anselm, if the boys can clear the brush, we yeah. can be alert to, to grab the snake. Can they start? Mark? Yeah? Before you do any disturbances... The holes there. Holes. It's probably gone down, down on those <laughs> holes. Let me, 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 me. Run that way. In fact, there, what do you want to do? Right, the Russells! All oh, right, we've got him then. Yes, we've got him. Yeah, right. It's a big Russells viper. Whoo! Care, care, care. This. Can I hit this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is myself, Anselm. Give me my grab. This is what this is what these things are designed for. The safe handling of extremely, extremely dangerous snakes like this Russell's Viper. I want to get him out and somewhere where I can deal with him more safely. Can you bring that grab stick, please, Anselm? Let's get him out in the open where I've got a bit of room to play with. Thank you. You can see how big a strike he's got. Oh, he's having a big go. We're in business. Business. Our first fully charged, perfectly healthy, undamaged, wild Russell's Viper. Four our anti-venom program. Look at this snake, it looks like a carpet. You think, how could that possibly ever be camouflage? Could you see him in there? I had to look hard. It's coming up towards dusk. This is a nocturnal snake. This is when it comes out hunting. This is when people meet them on the roads. And if you're not carrying a torch and you're walking barefoot, this is when you get bitten by what is arguably one of the most, if not the most dangerous snake in the world, and certainly the most dangerous snake in Sri Lanka.
I'm going to put him in very carefully because at the moment I actually release his head, my fingers are very, very close to a rather annoyed Russell's Viper. A targeted antivenom is a long-term solution to the problem of Russell's Viper bites in Sri Lanka. But there's another option I want to investigate. I brought along a prototype pair of specially reinforced boots designed to protect paddy workers in Burma. These boots, the snake-proof boots, I want to volunteer not to be bitten by a snake in them, but just to wear them for an hour and see, because they all work barefoot, and obviously barefoot is comfortable, but it's hazardous. And we just want to see if the concept of wearing these specially designed boots um, is agreeable to them. Now he feels comfortable. He feels comfortable. Uh, he's but happy about that. I'm waiting to see if they get hot. His um, rubber boots, I would think, would be hot. What is it? Back! <laughs> See that? Look at that. Come on. Then. Give me your best shot. Beautiful. What a nice snake. If you were uh, sitting where I'm sitting, you'd notice another defense from this Darman rat snake the scent from his cloacal glands, which is designed by many um, reptiles as a, a further defense to make them smell pungent and unpleasant and to get them left alone. The armored boots aren't needed for rat snakes. They may have six rows of teeth, but they're non-venomous. Sleeping Russell's vipers react angrily when disturbed. Some kind of foot and ankle protection would save the lives of paddy workers. But I'm not sure these boots are the answer. He thinks that uh, it is a very good protective wearing. But it, it is uncomfortable yes. because it's one thing, it's heavy and it's very really hot and sweaty. Now, these are tied with laces and I, I can feel the suction pulling my boots off. And with those, you haven't got to hope, you're going to be all the time barefoot mm. digging your boots out. Yes. The boots may be uncomfortable, but I prefer sore feet to sharing a bed in a crowded hospital with Russell's Viper Venom pumping through my veins. The rains have come, the downpour will activate the food chain, including small mammals and then snakes. We are also approaching the peak of the paddy harvest and there's a deluge of people in the fields. Sri Lankans are returning to their family homes to help with the harvest, but bites increase when people who don't normally farm work the paddy. The hospital starts to receive its own flood of Russell's Viper victims. 15-year-old Nayana is in a life-threatening state, but she's not a paddy field victim. She was bitten while hanging out washing. It's on the right ankle, on the oh, lateral that's a, aspect. That's a good no, bite. No, no, this is that's a big snake. How, how, oh. She's gone again. Oh, she's blood. And this is oh. frank blood. She's vomiting frank blood. So this is one of the dreaded complications of Russell's viper bite. You've got blood that is, has been rendered incoagulable, non-crossable, and uh, holes in the blood vessel walls. Of course, the major worry here is, is um, leakage of blood into, into the brain. Well, if, if the hemorrhage-inducing factor uh, affects the blood vessels in the brain, that at any time that could cause a stroke.
In Sri Lanka, at this time of year, people like Nayana die every day from Russell's viper bites. These people have to go to the paddy to harvest their crops. If they don't, they can't live. If they do, they may die. It's a hell of a quandary. Fancy going out in the morning just to do a job of work, not knowing whether you're going to be lying here with a Russell's Viper bite by the evening in severe pain. It really is a hard life. I'm determined my contribution will help. My expertise is snake catching. So I clear my head and get back on the road. Yes, sir. I've got it. I'm oh, sorry, but I gotta get it quick. I got it. Oh, well, my battery belt fell off. I dropped the torch. I left a trail of devastation behind me, and he nearly got away. But there's another Russell's Viper. Right. I think we bloody killed like this. That's a nice specimen. It's very encouraging, isn't it? So uh, this is the girl who was who was so worried about yesterday. Yes. How's she feeling today? She's much better. Nayana is recovering, though the venom is still affecting nerve impulses to some muscles causing facial paralysis. Luckily, she was bitten only four miles from this hospital, one of the best treatment centers for snake bites on the island. The speed of her treatment and the medic's expertise has saved her. There is one final emotional mission to complete. I join Professor Worrell and Dr. Arirani Araratnam to visit the home of Suresh. And how is you he now? See, he's very lively and he's smiling away and he's is happy. Is he back to normal? Uh, then the upper who's Samani video man veda karna wada. Oh, yes. And he's going to school. Does he switch the torch on and point it at the ground now when he's walking around in the dark? Suresh, woman that we are torch party kela koye the bima ba torch dem ma na tamu da da gan ne diya da. Yes, but they wasn't pointing at the towards yes, you've got to yes. look more carefully yes. in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone is as lucky as Suresh and Nayana. Other hospitals in Sri Lanka have far less facilities and expertise, and many victims die without ever making it to hospital or getting help. My mission's been successful. I arrive in the capital, Colombo, and deposit my Russell's Vipers. New home. Hopefully their venom will enable the production of an anti-venom that's tailor-made, effective, and cheap. An antidote to the terrible bite of the Sri Lankan Russell's Viper. Up next, get ready for a Mark O'Shea Cobra adventure. He goes deep into India to dispel a myth that killing a cobra causes the other cobras to seek revenge. All seems to be going well until O'Shea discovers a 10-foot king cobra that seems to remember him. Could the myth be true? Find out next, right here on Animal Planet. And find Animal Planet at discovery.com.